The relationship between Jahi and Sala is going to be absolutely incredible going forward. The idea that they have essentially two relationships when she's in her childhood form, Sala thinks she's the most brave and badass kid out there and that she inspires to be like her so that she can defeat her nemesis Jahi, but when she's in her adult form she fears her like the plague and she scurries and runs away. And the fact that our girl just is oblivious to it alongside her is going to be glorious. It is interesting because I was wondering why on the Crunchyroll subs for this episode they didn't refer to her as Salwa and had like a Sarvera or something like that name and I looked on the wiki and she has like three different names depending on the translation that uses it but I'm gonna stick with Salwa myself. Easier to say, easier to remember myself and it seems like most people go with that. But I have to say this was great because last week's episode I praised towards the end of that video about how they didn't really put a focus on her. More so Salwa was just in the bathhouse in the background and to me it looked like she was spying on her and observing her plotting her revenge. We see what truly went down in the first five minutes, six minutes of this episode, and it was completely glorious. I think the idea of retelling things we've already seen, it can be a hit or a miss for some people. Generally, I'm okay with it as long as it serves to act like a new purpose, like the perspective change changes everything that we just witnessed and doesn't take away from the previous. And from Jahi's perspective, you'll notice her as like a cameo throughout the episode, but you don't really question anything. I walked out of last week's episode being like, Understandable why she loves the bathhouse. I mean, great soap, great shampoo. Turns out, no, uh, actually a bit of a thief. And I love how because she bumped into her, she was just trying to relax, she was trying to treat herself. And the idea that Jahi used half a bottle of what is apparently very expensive shampoo, making a lot of sense given the fact that she was raving about this shampoo, like, oh shit, it's actually better than the dark realm. Why would a complimentary bathhouse shampoo be better? You know, who knows, maybe it's just a really good business, I was willing to buy into it, but to see that she stole it and probably would have used the entire bottle had she not moved it away before most of it was gone was pretty great. And I love the idea of just like bumping into, you know, the boss and the manager being like, okay, that makes my time here just so special that I'm okay with dealing with this absurdity. It was just great. And I actually wasn't expecting to get any more solo content other than that, and I was going to be perfectly content. So when the end of the episode came in and she's fighting a flock of crows there and honestly I was totally expecting her to just transform right then and there because she was running late for work so therefore she wouldn't take into consideration her surroundings. But no, just the whole idea that a kid can inspire her to take down her enemy and to not give up and it's funny to think about had she not had that conversation with Jahi, it's entirely possible and I'm willing to put money that Sawa would have stop tracking her after that. She would have just said, you know what? I'm defeated. I'm scared. I'm having nightmares. Clifford the big red dog's in my dreams. Jahi's in my dreams. I'm done. But Jahi indirectly and without realizing it encouraged someone who's trying to bring her down to continue on. And even though it probably won't go anywhere because, I mean, just look, she has the worst luck at observing Jahi. The whole idea that she runs into a restaurant and she's yelling and feeling like she's a ferocious beast. No, she's just overwhelmed because there's so many damn customers on a weekday. I think it's going to continue to be like that. But I'm glad that they kind of like spiced up the relationship because she bumps into her as the kid form. There will be more of like a friendship bonding sequence that will encourage her to keep going after Jahi. But in her human form, she probably won't even ever recognize her or acknowledge her because she'll observe something from a distance and misunderstand what truly is happening, which is a fantastic way to give two different varying relationships towards Jahi from one specific character. Pretty fantastic. And I mean, I'm glad they're having fun with the idea of Jahi having two forms, child and adult. And I mean, you have landlady, you have the manager, and they both recognize both forms. But then you have situations where the childhood friend a couple weeks back, right? You know, there's so many different ways to shake up and shift up the formula. So I'm glad to see more characters, especially like Sawa as an example of being more than just like one and done sort of a thing. And I have to say the like other half of this episode, which was basically her just scared. She was trying to fight the magical girl. She goes to what is basically Costco, gets roped into the free samples, and oh my god. When she had the pineapple peeler or like slicer, whatever you want to call it, I just thought to myself, we are now nine episodes into this show, and I've seen her eat very few things. She's had some sweets, she's had some meats, but it's mostly 
fried beans. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe where she lives, pineapple is just really cheap, but I highly doubt it because pineapples are not going to be the same price as these goddamn beans you've been eating. So she spent money on a pineapple slicer because she loves the taste of it, but she's probably never going to use it. It's funny because she's thinking about a weapon and I mean, she ends up buying a children's lightsaber. The pineapple slicer is probably the most viable weapon she has in her arsenal right now from what she bought. I mean, the fact that she actually gave away her sponges because she was in such disbelief. I mean, it would have made sense to give one away, but I mean, girl, I mean, even if you're only frying up some beans and shit, I mean, you still gotta clean your pants. You might as well keep those going, but it was great because I think, uh, Anyone who's been to like a big like warehouse style store, even if not Costco, especially Costco because they give out those free samples. The free samples can definitely get you. And I mean, uh, it's sad. I mean, she can't pay her rent. She hardly has money for food because she keeps making dumb purchases. The first time you could probably argue made sense because she bought the knapsack and all the tools to find a crystal. Even if it was just in her backyard, you could argue why she did that. Though the spontaneous splurging in a warehouse store I mean, I thought she was gonna end up buying a couch or something, but no, uh, looks like she's shit out of luck. And to see the idea of her, like, planting a trap inside her apartment, I mean, on paper makes sense. Sticky floors, sticky windows, everything like that, and I knew as soon as she was doing that that the landlady was gonna get attacked. But I like the idea that rather than it just being she gets mad and, you know, freaks out because she doesn't have money for rent, rather, you get a quick taste of her saving a human. When really she was just got bonked on the head and in return Jahi got bonked in the head and she's giving this emotional speech, oh I've changed and I protected a human and she's like, you did this to yourself and you're not dying, it's so absurd. I like that there is steady development while being absolute insanity and just pure chaos with the comedy. Like I mean, I rave about this show every single week, I mean this show has been a blessing, I'm still surprised it's not more highly talked about because from meme faces alone it's worth a watch, I mean I know it sounds silly, but I mean, the number of times I've seen like a meme online and I'm like, I have no idea why that character is making that face, but I want to watch it because it looks hilarious. And I think in this case, it's probably one of the most accurate that, you know, you see a dozen Jahi faces in the matter of minutes and it truly does live up to those faces when you watch the show. It's heartwarming. It's hilarious. It's just absolute craziness. And It'll be interesting. I mean, we got a little more episodes as it stands right now. I'm hoping we get to see within the next few episodes that childhood friend pop up again. I thought that was such a sweet addition a couple weeks back there. So I'm hoping we get more of that. And just overall, I mean, at this point, they have such a variety with all the character pairings. But I'm glad that they're still finding ways to incorporate new ones, like in the case of Sawa having two different relationships with the two different versions of Jahi, which is pretty cool because she doesn't realize it's the same one. But rather, you know, she would never admit to thinking that the adult version is this badass powerful goddess, but someone with similar hair who is just, you know, someone who seems very intelligent. I mean, from her point of view, anyway. I mean, it's just kind of great to see how they continue to spice up the formula and just, this show remains to be a blessing and I'm so glad it's carrying over into fall, which is already looking to be an amazing season, but this is a show that I will never let up on. This is amazing stuff, but let me know your thoughts and feelings down below your favorite point in the episode. Costco is probably my favorite point, but uh, let me know yours down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.